You're with the buck stops here. I'm Ankita Mukherjee. On the show tonight, maximum cities dance bars will open again after the Supreme Court overturns a seven-year-old ban. Was this ban sexist and unconstitutional? Or will the court's verdict now give a cloak of legitimacy to the exploitation of Mumbai's bar dancers? That's our big debate on the buck stops here tonight. Also on the show, a month after the Uttarakhand cloud burst and the flash floods that killed thousands, NDTV collates hundreds of satellite images to get you a reconstruction of just what happened in those devastating 48 hours. But first, the big news break tonight. Nine children have been killed in Bihar. There's a tragedy in a Bihar school in Chapra, just 60 kilometers from the state capital. Nine children who've died from food poisoning after eating the midday meal provided by the government. All of the children were under the age of 10. Another 38 children have been admitted to a local hospital. Several of them are critically ill. Manish Kumar joining us at this point. Manish, uh, what further information are you getting at this point? We believe already there's been a great deal of protest, people surrounding a local police station as well. Uh, what more can you tell us? Ankita, I just spoke to the DM, uh, Abhijit Sina, who is uh, uh, there at the hospital. He has confirmed only nine deaths and 38 uh, children are being uh, undergoing treatment in Chapra Sadar Hospital. And he has claimed that they are all responding to the treatment. And as far as menu uh, is concerned, today rice and uh, potato and soybeans vegetable was served to all these children. And now doctors, they are claiming, they are saying that uh, there was some kind of chemical. It's not known whether it was in the rice or whether it was in the, in the oil. But there was some kind of uh, insecticide or uh, sulfas which, was, uh, which has been found. Although a FSL team has been rushed from Patna and the DM Abhijit Sina he has confirmed that all those ingredients have been seized now. They are under the police supervi uh, in the police custody. So it will be very easy for them to uh, find out the exact reason for this uh, you know, uh, incident. And besides that, the, all the senior, uh, senior minister, uh, P.K. Sahi, he has gone there. The other officers, they have also rushed to Chapra. And besides that, uh, the commissioner of Saran uh, uh, and DIG, they will start the investigation they, uh, uh, from tomorrow morning. And uh, the DM is saying that there is no need of any panic because all those children who are responding to the treatment, because initially there was apprehension that some children might have to be referred to the Patna Medical College Hospital, but uh, he has said that right now they are all being, you know, responding to the treatment, so they will be treated there. There are enough doctors, enough medicine in Chapra. Ankita. Right, uh, Manish, uh, we're already hearing uh, the BJP politicizing uh, the tragedy in a sense, taking on the Nitish Kumar government. Uh, Nitish, of course, uh, parting ways with them very recently. Um, but also, has there been any official reaction yet from the government? Uh, the government has ordered an inquiry. Uh, government has also announced rupees 2 lakh rupees as ex gracia for all those uh, students who have died in this uh, 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 incident. And besides that, the uh, st uh, state government is saying that no uh, guilty, no guilty person will be spared. And this inquiry report, okay. they are expecting that inquiry report will come by we're, tomorrow we're, evening. We're just being Ankita. joined on the phone line now by uh, Rajiv Pratap Rudi, spokesperson for the BJP. Mr. Rudi, your reactions to that story that's developing in Bihar uh, at the moment, um, a tragedy that could have been averted. This is a midday meal that in a sense, uh, the government oversees at a larger level. Your reactions? Well, uh, I just rushed to Patna, and this happens to be uh, my 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 district, so I'm I'm rushing there. Uh, but it's very very unfortunate uh, that so many children have died. I see uh, there are nine they say have died, but I have information that more have died, and about 80 of them are injured, and they are in a very very critical stage. Uh, this incident has happened in uh, in a place uh, which is a block headquarter called Mashraka School, next very close to that block headquarter. And uh, we actually do not know what is the reason, but it's certainly that it's poisoning. Poisoning by, it, it, uh, they say some, because they, the, uh, the oil which was used was adulterated. 
or there is some foul play but at the end of the day it's a lapse and and that is what is uh, because these people are not very well off they are young school children who survive and come to school to uh, study as well as right. uh, make the best use of the midday meal there is a laxity because such complaints about midday scheme which has completely has collapsed in bihar has been appearing off and on and possibly the government has not been taking cognizance of that they have been rather so there is a very lackadaisical approach or there is a laxity which is visible but nonetheless it's a it's a tragedy which has struck these uh, children do you believe then sir that it's time to revisit the entire uh, midday scheme the way in which at least it's being implemented uh, on the ground in these government schools yes uh, in bihar the implementation has been under question for a very long time and uh, we have also been when we were in the government raising this issue and this department is there with the janta dal united the gentleman who contested the last maharajganj parliamentary constituency mr shahi uh, is this area which has the school which is located is was in the web they have lost the last parliament elections and mr shahi is there but there is no uh, considered response from the government and as if it's it seems very inconsequential for to the except that they have around an extra payment of 2 uh, lakhs but can can this bring back the life of a child or a Uh, a mother's uh, ch- uh, child who has been lost in the pro- lost in this tragedy so mm-hmm. i think the government is it's, it's, it's just absolutely taken a, a stand let's give them an extra share payment let's do. but there is there is there is nothing which we can say substantive so far but right. nonetheless it's a tragedy and we are all concerned there are many more who are not well uh, the district administration which is in chapra which is my district and my parliamentary constituency is next to it i am right. rushing i am rushing there in the night right. itself um, i hope uh, i hope these the rest of them would survive them okay mr confident. rudy thank you very much thank indeed uh, for joining us uh, with your views uh, the bjp already asking questions of the nitish kumar uh, government as that tragedy unfolds nine children all under the age of 10 already dead after consuming that midday meal today many many more are believed to be critically ill even as we speak we'll continue to track that story very closely here on ndtv 24/7 but the other big news break at this hour the government has finally bitten the fdi bullet increasing the limit for foreign direct investment in defense from 26% to 49% though the new policy will be applied selectively with the focus on acquiring state of the art technology in particular fdi and telecom has been raised from 74% to 100% as suggested recently by the telecom commission um, let's go across to ndtv sunil prabhu for more uh, sunil uh, how do you see this has there been in a sense a comprehensive lifting of fdi caps uh, um, what kind of a signal has the government managed to send out at this point and in a sense is this already too late well as they say uh, the proof of the pudding is in the eating and what they were trying to argue today was that foreign direct investment in various sectors in the last quarter itself has seen 25% increase india has now become one among the three most favored nations according to the commerce minister uh, but uh, clearly whatever we might say uh, ankita the fact is Uh, that the economy is not doing well and this is clearly one measure that is being made uh, to try to reach out to ensure that uh, foreign direct investment comes into india uh, because there are no other avenues in terms of getting investment uh, of course uh, as you rightly said foreign direct investment has been increased in the defense sector but they're not really putting it specifically to 49% they're leaving it open saying it's subject to the cabinet committee on security to take a final call based on the state of art technology and leaving it absolutely flexible that's what the minister said what that decision will be how much that cap will be whether it will be 49% will it be 74 can it be technically even 100 those are things that they are not specifying at this stage this will be subject to cabinet committee on security and the defense ministry's approval to move that note having said that you were right in saying that they've gone uh, more or less uh, from a fipb route to a automatic route so as to make it easier and an enabling provision Uh, for foreign direct investment and not to get bottled down in terms of uh, bureaucratic hurdles and that's the uh, message that the government of india wants to send today in many of those sectors that it's liberalized they have also given in principle approval for insurance as well as banking for 49% that's old but this is all subject to parliamentary approval and we really have to wait and see when parliament meets uh, whether they will be able uh, to push uh, those uh, sectors both banking and insurance Uh, up to 49 percent all right sunil thanks uh, very much indeed for uh, joining us with those details
Let's move on to our top focus tonight. Mumbai's dance bars will open again very soon. This after the top court overturned a seven-year-old ban today. Did the government not really have a strong legal position? Was that ban in fact sexist and unconstitutional as uh, those opposing it have argued? And what will the court's verdict now mean for the 750,000 bar dancers in the city? In this dilapidated building in South Mumbai that is home to many bar dancers, we met 18-year-old Shweta. That's not her real name. Shweta is glued to the TV set since this morning, keenly watching the apex court verdict on the constitutional validity of dancing in a bar, though she hardly understands the legal parlance of the order. The order of lifting the ban on dance bars brings a smile on her face. घर में बहुत प्रॉब्लम थी छोटे छोटे भाई बहन थे उनकी पढ़ाई मम्मी मम्मी पापा सबको देखना पड़ता है उस वजह से इस लाइन में आना पड़ा हमें भी कोई शौक नहीं होता इस लाइन में आने का हमारी मजबूरी रहती है इसलिए हम आते हैं Poverty is one of the major reasons that pushes many young women to take up this profession once in there is hardly a way out like 30 year old Meera who joined a famous South Mumbai dance bar just a couple of months before the ban was imposed in 2005 Rejoiced by the decision, Meera is now ready to dance again. A decision she has taken not out of will but compulsion. She wants to educate her daughter so that she doesn't share her mother's fate. Deserted by her husband who occasionally visits her, Meera says she has no option but to wear the ghungru once again. Supreme Court ne jo bhi faisla liya aaj ki tarikh mein ki matlab dance bar khol diye. Ye ek itni matlab der se faisla aaya lekin ye sab ladkiyon ke liye bahut khushi ki baat hai. और जो बुराई थी जो गंदगी फैली हुई थी चारों तरफ के भाई लोगों के साथ जाना पड़ता पहले कितना भी पैसा कमाती थी लेकिन फोन नंबर तक नहीं देती थी बात भी नहीं करती थी हमारे घर में हमारे बच्चे पढ़े लिखे हैं वो लोग इस लाइन में हम लाना भी नहीं चाहते हैं हम आगे मजबूरी में यही है हमने अपनी ज़िंदगी इसलिए ख़राब की कि एक इंसान की ज़िंदगी खराब होने से दस लोगों की ज़िंदगी बनती तो कोई फ़र्क नहीं पड़ता हमें But social activists say only a contract between the girls owners and the government will ensure they are not exploited. Bar owners should have this uh, uncontrolled uh, uh, right to exploit the girls in the bars mm -hmm. and I think that issue we have to take very seriously. And how do you ensure that they are not exploited ma'am? That is through the party agreement where the government must come in bar owners must come in and we who are working for the girls must come in and must do something and with the girls own representation in this body. I cannot say that. I don't know whether it really came down. I cannot say whether it will go up. I am not a, a expert on the rate of uh, crime rate or prostitution rate. And as I told you, prostitution is not a crime. डांस बार हो ना हो उसमें बहुत बड़ा सवाल था जब ये दोनों सदनों ने कानून बनाया तब कि नाबालिग बच्चियों को उसमें एडल्ट दिखा के रखा जाता है और कई जगह पे अलग अलग तरीके से वो एक्सप्लाइटेशन की शिकार हो जाती है और उसमें क्रिमिनलाइजेशन भी बहुत है इसीलिए मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट का जो आया है फैसला जो आप कह रहे हैं उसके डिटेल्स देखना बहुत जरूरी है For the Mumbai police though the lifting of the ban is no good news this means that a force which is understaffed and overworked which is dealing with a law and order situation in Mumbai and ensuring there are no terror strikes will have to also keep a tab on these dance bars ensuring that they don't indulge in prostitution under the garb of entertainment most of the policemen are of the view that the 2005 amendment of the Bombay Police Act help maintain the city's law and order which will now go for a toss ha musuda tayar kela hota ani vidhan sabhi ne vidhan parishad ne purna charcha karun ha kayda parit kela hota yachavar khup charcha ta kalamadhe sudha jhali hoti ani tajnyancha sallyanis ha kayda karnyat ala hota ata nirnay dila ay korta cha nirnay alyanantar to sagla abhyaslyanantar जरूर सरकार विचार करील पर आज ही सदना मध्य सदस्य भावना लक्षा जर घर महाराष्ट्र मधे डांस बारला बंदी आ सार्वत्रिक भावना है महिला विशेषता या बाबतीत प्रतिक्रिया अतिशय तीव्र स्वरूप
Though this might be a setback for the Maharashtra government, for Shweta, it's time to celebrate. As she sets out, her identity changing once again. For the world, she will now be known as Reema. With Rashmi Rajput, Nidhi Razdan for NDTV. For well, joining us on our big discussion tonight, Majid Memon, National Secretary of the NCP, whose party mooted that ban in the first place. Joining us also, Anand Grover, lawyer for uh, bar owners, Flavia Agnes, women's rights lawyer, someone who's campaigned for the rights of bar dancers to have the right to livelihood without exploitation. Rahul Narvekar, spokesperson for the Shiv Sena, also joining us tonight, as is Sudhir Mishra, filmmaker, whose uh, chameli was, about, uh, who, uh, was one such uh, bar dancer. And also a very special guest with us tonight, Shagufta Rafiq, scriptwriter, uh, would-be director and um, a one-time bar dancer as well. But Anand Grover, let me begin uh, with you tonight. Um, you know, you've argued on behalf of uh, the bar dancers that uh, this was sexist, this was an unconstitutional ban uh, which has today been struck down. Well, you know, um, I, I think I should clarify that I'm for I the bar dancers and women's groups. Right. Yeah. Now, the thing is that uh, a lot of uh, has been said about so-called prostitution. This was gone into detail by the Bombay High Court and the Bombay High Court found no evidence of this kind of trafficking and prostitution. This, this judgment of the Supreme Court has upheld the Bombay High Court judgment, which actually said that the law is unconstitutional in violation of the law of equality, the constitutional guarantee of equality. Moreover, it actually asserts the women's right to autonomy, that they can decide what they want to do with themselves. The moral brigade who want to control it for the larger common good, who think they have a, uh, the, the prerogative to decide what other people should do, that has been, that has been uh, very clearly negatived by the Supreme Court. So I think it's very important to understand that this is a victory for people who believe in women's rights, the autonomy of women, and that criminalization is not the right way to go about it. Now we hope that the Maharashtra government will see sense and they will allow the bar dancers to be able to practice their profession. I don't agree with the tone of your commentator that these people are forced to do things. The, the way it is coming out is that these women have no choice. Some of them don't have a choice because of poverty, but others think it's a legitimate profession. Right. And I don't think you can cast moral judgments on them, either on television okay. or as it was thought to be done uh, in the court uh, by the state of Maharashtra.